Hello everyone! In this video we're going to be looking at a slightly different set of skills. We're going to be looking at uh, the skills that you can use in geography, or for any other subject for that matter, to create a land use map. Now, you might be aware that Google creates some very good maps, but what is less well known is the fact that Google has this function that allows you to create your own individualized personal maps called Google My Maps. This is what I'm going to be showing you how to use today. So we're going to create a new map, and um, when it loads up, I'm going to go to the area that I know quite well, because I'm currently living in it, and it is Nice, in France. There we go, pin's been dropped, and I'm going to zoom into the this area over here. There we go, let me focus it. Now, uh, for those of you who know the area, you can see this over here is the sea and the promenade. This is uh, the uh, commercial area over here, the shopping district. This is the old town, and the port is off to the west over here on this side of the map. I'm going to remove this little label over there. There we go. So, although this does look very, very similar to a normal standard Google map, it has got some differences. You've got this menu bar over here, and you've got this little section over here that allows you to, to add different layers to it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to name our map, and we're going to call it Nice Land Use. Okay, because that's what we're creating. So we have our Nice Land Use map. Now, as you know, what you want to do when you're creating a land use map is you want to add various color-coordinated um, sections or areas to it. Uh, so you want to basically, I don't know, say maybe highlight this area over here and call it a shopping district. Okay. So how do you do that? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to go over here to the Draw Line uh, button. You click on that, and it allows you to draw around a certain area on this map. Now I'm going to do it very roughly over here um, for you to get the point. There we go and we're going to call it a shopping district. Saved. Uh, you can also change the color. We're going to pick for shopping districts, we're going to be picking red. There we go. You have other functions, let me go back there, you can change the um, style, you can change the transparency, the border, you can customize it however you want, but I'm just going to leave it in its um, normal format. So there we go, we've got a shopping district. I can label another area and give it the same color. Say, for example, I know that uh, this road over here is a shopping district, so I'm going to add another much thinner area. There we go, and we're going to call that a shopping district too. Shopping district. And I'm going to pick the same color, I believe it's this red. Done. So, as you can imagine, you can build this map and you can add lots of colors to it uh, to denote the different areas that you have already determined. Now, remember, you have to go there in the first place and you have to conduct a survey. And when you're doing a land use survey, you need to kind of like study what the building's land use is in the ground floor only. Uh, other Let's put another nice little area over here. I'm just going to do this very, very quickly because I believe you're probably getting the point now. I'm going to call this, very simply, a park. And uh, because it's a park, I'm going to be very boring and going to give it a nice little green color. There we go. So, this is the beginnings of a land use map. And if you're doing this for your coursework, you can imagine uh, how you can expand on it and you know color coordinate a whole district that you have studied. In addition to um, creating various blocks like we have over here, uh, you can also pinpoint exact points. Imagine you want to um, do a, like a bit of a dispersal map, or you want to kind of like pin uh, and look at the distribution of uh, I don't know zebra crossings, bars, um, restaurants, police stations, anything you can imagine. We have this little bar over here, which is called the Add Marker button. I'm going to do restaurants, and be very boring. There we go, restaurant. I'm going to just call it restaurant. Done. I'm going to add another one, just to be quick. Oops, not there. Let's move it. Right, and we are going to rename that one to restaurant. 
for restaurants you can see I'm going to be selecting different color not red I'm going to be going with yellow and yellow uh, and as you can notice you can pinpoint lots of different things all the way around the map you can add an infinite amount of pins theoretically speaking Final little thing it allows you to do over here is it allows you to measure distances. Um, if you are doing a bit of a dispersal map, you can find out what the distances between these points are, and you can record that down, maybe put it in a graph, screenshot it, etc. Go So we can see that these two restaurants are about 313 meters apart. What this program also allows you to do is it allows you to print off these maps. Um, let's go into the preview. So if I was to print off this map, it would look something along these lines over here. Let me just go print so you can see it exactly. Print map, landscape, print. Uh, my printer will pop up here, but you'll get the idea of what I'm talking about. There we go. So it prints a nice map. It even creates a key. I would imagine you'd want to um, create your own key to make it a little bit more detailed. I'll leave that up to you, though. Let's go back. There we go. We will go back to the edit mode. So this program is quite useful. It allows you to do a lot of things and it is extremely useful um, for your geography coursework. So good luck. Create some great coursework. Make sure that you do the surveys properly and have a really great day. Thank you very much for watching.